Welcome everyone to the Foolish Tech Show. Uh, we're here to go over training and support with Foolish IT products and uh, I think we got a special segment today about removing malware with uh, D72. Uh, Proctor's going to get that after he gets his virtual machine infected here. I just gave him a link to some malicious file URLs that you should be able to just take that domain, copy and paste it, and uh, like in that list, the domain, copy and paste, open, save, run. Yeah. Should just start infecting away. So while he gets that set up, let me jump in the live chat here and. I think I'd seen some questions yesterday, but we didn't get a chance to answer them. So we did have some questions here. Um, looks like someone wanted to know how you can require a password on D72 opening and how to remove D72 folders and file after the session has been ended. Uh, those are both going to be options on the uh, in session tab. So when you go to the in session tab, I'll see if I can bring it up here. Yeah. One momento. share my screen here shortly. So the questions were, how can you set it so D72 has a password on open? And for that, you would use this in session option, close and password protect this app. Uh, and how to delete the files and folders. And for that one, you would use this option, close and delete this app and all tools. Um, <coughs> me. You can have it automatically do these if you save these settings and those will be saved with your configuration so if you have one for like your remote ones you'd probably want to have a remote session saved for close and delete this app as the save settings here and that would be a saved config like remote session then if you had one where you were going to leave it on the system like for your tech benches or if you have a managed client and you don't want to have to download the app there every time or walk around with a USB flash drive to them all, you can close and password protect this app and that could be a different config or just your default config, whichever one. Um, important note on that is it is going to use your technician password. So same password you use for the lock screen is what you'll use for password protecting this app. And another question we had up there was, can you uninstall a Microsoft Office update using the DM installer tool? Um, I think it depends if it would show up in the add remove programs or not. I know it does, but I think I actually filter those. I was going to say, I, 
I didn't think the Windows updates, so Microsoft Some Windows them. updates, don't show in there except a couple that are like they're specially they're not they don't show as update name they show as like an installed app item so I don't believe you can for it I, and I'm wondering if this is uh, can we uninstall Microsoft Office 2016 after it was pushed out through Windows updates to Office 365 customers mm. and no no that's not going to be able to be happening um, I think in that case I've seen some form notes about it in other places that you pretty much have to uninstall Office 2016 and go back and download 2015. So. so that was our two questions there. Um, got some other filler stuff we can do while we wait here. Uh, John, I hadn't gotten, or Nick, I hadn't gotten a chance to look at these, but I'll post them in the live chat here. A uh, link to 15 free ebooks uh, every programmer should read. And I haven't gotten a chance to look at it, and I don't know if you read books like that, but some nope. of them looked interesting. The top one is how to design programs. I read um, nothing. I, I read one-line, two-line things, you know, tips. I don't read books. Yeah. I figured as I much. Enough, yeah, I read enough code. Post it out there for anyone. Um, and what I was thinking is maybe it would have some of the, like the design tips and things like that is what I was going to be trying to look for and point you towards yeah. once I saw it. But. Well, yeah, you can feel free to do that. <laughs> just, um, just give me the cliff notes. Yeah. Well, it, it may have been a case like Little Dicky. I show it to you and you jump all over it. <laughs> I, uh, if for anyone out there, that's a rapper. Um, Lil Dicky, Save That Money is the hottest track out right now. Um, be sure to check him out. But I, I showed it to Nick last, yesterday. And this morning he comes and shows me like his Kickstarter videos, his Cribs video, like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so. The guy's funny. He's, he gets, he's got my respect. Because he's not it a douchebag. It is good. I like it. Real. Keeping it real. You even uh, uh, bought his album on Amazon to support him? I did. I did. You know, on that album, there's a good one, The Pillow Talk. I really like that one. Johnny's that, was, that was actually good. I made love to that last night. Wow. <laughs> A horrible song for that, but okay. Well, it was a good, it was a good rhythm, and yeah. it's just him like talking over me, basically. He's like, and and, and talking about believe in a god and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just like, <laughs> uh, <sighs> you know, for a bit it was funny, but you know, then I didn't really pay attention to it. Well, I like the alien. Oh, yeah, you the aliens. He was like, yeah. You don't believe in aliens? Oh, that's funny. Uh, it's a it. good, love good it. rapper. I highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out. Uh, check him out there. I don't like rap. Actually, that's that's incorrect. I like Cypress Hill. But maybe the old Outkast. Bone, Thugs and Harmony. They had a good album. All those are good. Yeah. But, you know, it's the whole thug thing that really ups that, that upsets me that I just, I'm sick of, you know. I know, like, Biggie did, and what what's his dude? Um, They did that back in two, Tupac. They did that back in the day. They did all that crap already. So move on, yeah. please. Yeah, well, everybody's big, and he actually has a, a guest 
on that uh, track about people talking about money. It's like you don't have a new outlook on money. I've heard it all. Stop talking about your money. Move yeah. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why are you buying all these chains? You don't need all them chains. <laughs> you only need one chain. Well, <laughs> two chains if you're two chains. Two chains can have two chains, but everybody else just needs one chain. You don't need all them chains. Okay. It's good. <laughs> good stuff. I like it. Um, yeah, so uh, what else we got? Well, I was going to talk to P about you know, stuff with the seven X, but all right, what you got? Well, aren't you doing something? Yeah, I'm trying to infect this VM. Oh, infect away. How are how is this difficult? <laughs> <laughs> the project's gonna be calling up clients. I know this is out of the order. How did man. how did you get that system messed up? But <laughs> could I have you come over to my office real quick? I need you to break a computer for me. There's a few of them I could, I could, they could certainly do that. <laughs> I mean, the other thing you can just always search for uh, free movie downloads. <laughs> just install stuff off there. A lot of those links were were dead links. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the internet's getting pretty good about stopping that stuff. The other places on that list have good places, but most of them you have to register for it and then sign in and then go in and read and download them and rename stuff and whole nine yards. So. My what? I have a dumb, a dumb thing. A dumb thing. Hmm. Oh wow. Hmm. That upsets me. Proctor. Yeah. Is that one of your employees? Dustin yeah. Taylor. That is Dustin. Yeah. So Dustin had a question in the live chat. Um. Is he watching the show right now? Yeah. Awesome. So we can just talk to him about it. So Dustin had a question. He said he ran into a problem with D7.2 failing to download, failing to install malware bytes. Deleted the install file and hoped that it would re-download. Can you manually download the file and drop it in place without renaming the file or would I have to rename the file to the old version? Um, what do you mean the old version? Um, because you should, it should be downloading the, the, the file you would get from them and using the same name normally. But you can check in the app config, and I'll show off all that here in just a second. Let me get my thingy back up and thingy side. All right. 
right, so I'll share my screen here and we'll take a look at that. So we got malware bytes here. Uh, you do want to make sure you're using malware bytes v2, not the other one in there, which I'll show off here. Well, I think we took it out of there, so. You found out the file was corrupt, or is the what's now? Because basically, if you look at the, um, and this, this will go good for other people as well, so I'll keep explaining it, but if you select your app, your custom app, you can go to New Edit App, and, and the Download, you can see where it's downloading from and the file that it's trying to download and what it'll save it as. This will be what the custom app is expecting for the next part where it runs the install portion of it. But we go ahead and try test download here. Ah, it was corrupted on the flash drive. Gotcha. Now, two, if you just deleted this file from your third-party tools folder, that should force it to re-download. We'll go ahead and show that off here, too. So if we go to MBAM2 setup, just delete it there, come back over here, and run our malware bytes. It did force it to re-download malware bytes. We get this nice little thing here. And we are going to uninstall, uninstall, continue. Yeah, so it did force it to re-download and re-ran the app. So in the future, if you ever have an issue with the app and third-party tools and you want to force it to re-download, you can just come into your third-party tools, delete it out. Or if you wanted to download it manually, you can always right-click on the right one and go to apps download page and you can download it directly from there as well and it does look like we do rename the file because they have versioning and stuff to it so it is just mvm2 set up so you would want to make sure that you check your custom app and make sure of what it's trying to save the file for and that would be the download tab and this file name is what you would want to have it named as. Yeah, no worries. Um, and actually, uh, Dustin, that was uh, what Proctor wanted to talk to Nick about and since you're in the middle of using it all the time, um, why don't you go ahead and any kind of issues, questions, things you think we could do better, because this would be the time to speak up since Nick is programming D7X right now. I know you've been working with it for a little while now, so uh, especially you having not used it before but being a tech uh, prior to this and now coming in and using D7.2, your opinion matters greatly to us, just as anyone else uh, using D7.2. But you have a unique opinion because you were using tech before. You had a way that you were doing things. Uh, Proctor showed you D7.2 and wants you to use that. You've been using it now. How do you feel about it overall? And especially, what do you think can be done better? Or do you have things that you would prefer be done differently? Um, that's the kind of thing Nick's looking for right now to throw into D7X. So, 
at first he was he was kind of reluctant to change the processes that he he had been accustomed to using, but once he got into to using D72, he um, saw the benefits of how it, uh, how much time it could save you and uh, uh, how beneficial the, the various features of D72 are. Most definitely. Um, is he just in the other room watching? He is. He doesn't this? want to be on video. Uh, mm -hmm. You can turn your video off if he wants to just talk. Okay. You want to come over here, Dustin? Yeah. I was thinking, I mean, he can at least just talk to us while you're setting that stuff up. Okay. Yeah. Um, so check on that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Your video is still on there. Hey, what's up? Yeah, um, so I guess like what I was trying to say, I can't really type that well, in, you know, as fast as, as y'all can talk. So yeah, it, no is, it is better for me to be over here. I also don't have a mic or a uh, camera at my computer because it is a tech bench computer. Um, don't use it for that. Um, but I guess what I was asking was so. When it downloads uh, D72, or well, when D72 downloads like malware bytes, uh, it, it'll say that it's downloading, you know, version 2.4.6. But is it actually downloading the latest version, just naming that for the programming, so that the auto programming can install it? Uh, yes. Okay, so even though it says maybe 2.6 in the, and it doesn't rename it to the latest version, it just always downloads it and names it that file. Correct. So it always is going to download and name it. I think it's just MM2 setup or something to that effect. Right, right. Okay, okay, that's cool. I didn't know. I was just curious about that. Because yeah. it seemed like it, it appeared like when it would download, it would say version 2.4.6 or whatever. And uh, I didn't know if that was the latest version or not. So now I do know. But um, also, thanks a lot for the input on... You know, going into the custom apps, that's really a video. I guess y'all probably have that on the website as well. I haven't had a chance to look at that portion of it, but um, that's going to help out a lot in the using the uh, too. It's, it's really, I really feel like the program, I have no you know, complaints about it. I, the sound is going all crazy on Proctor's computer. Oh, sorry. I mean, he's clicking on a lot of stuff. It might be that virus you've got going on this virtual machine here. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe it's between the two or down. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you guys for having me on the show. I'm going to get back to work. Uh, B7S2 is really a great program. I, I still love it and wouldn't change my ways from it. So you guys have a really short chat show. If you have any more questions, I'll, I'll shoot them at you guys. Awesome. We'll be here for it. All right. Have a great one. Yeah, I don't know what happened to your your sound there, Proctor. It went all kinds of robotic. I'm sure. And it's still like that. Yeah, say something again. I switched back to the headset. Much better now. Yay, thank you. All right, I have this thing maybe a little infected. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be trash as long as it yeah. appears infected. I'm not even really seeing any symptoms, but I, maybe I should just go ahead and, and go through the routine anyway. Hmm. 
Dustin say he has such a magnetic personality he broke the mic. <laughs> Hmm. All right, let me select on you here. All right, we see a, a system there. All right. Um. All right, today I'm going to show you how to use D7.2 to remove malware from an infected system. What? All right, I've already put D7.2 on a folder in the desktop, and I'm going to double click on the D7.2 icon. first screen you're going to see is the system info tab which will provide you a lot of useful information about the computer um, and the state of Windows on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and move over to the malware removal tab. Um, I have several different configurations. I've uh, one for, uh, for, a, for a full malware removal which uh, runs a lot of scans as well as the built-in D72 functions. Um, I would run this if I, if I have a lot of time to spend on doing a malware removal uh, because some of the scans can take you know, a number of hours to run and then I have a quick setup which uh, um, runs some of the faster scans and the built-in D72 functions. I'm going to go ahead and select quick. Um, the way I have my config set up here in the, the first tab, I have some of the D72 built-in functions um, like removing policies, clearing the temp folder, clearing uh, proxy settings. Um, I like to run everything that is mostly automated and doesn't require my intervention in the, mal in the first phase, in the second phase, and over in the, the third malware uh, section is where I like to put the, the scans that are going to take a long time. Um, I like to start D7.2 uh, on the automated things, let those run, then come back later uh, when that's finished and go through the various scans. Um, this just allows me to be a little more productive and work on a number of computers at one time. Um, one of the things I always would select would be the registry hive backup. Uh, just in case something goes awry and I need to, to get back to my original configuration. Uh, these uninstall or auto set to uh, check to run. Kills a check to run. Um, fix file associations, find move shortcuts, remove policies, uh, clear policies. Uh, the pre-malware scan is checked, deleting temp files, deleting internet temporary files. Purging system restore, emptying the recycle bin. Uh, I'm going to kill all rename operations. Um, and actually, normally have browsers to default as, as one of the last steps that I would run. Uh, normally, r actually run that manually at the end of the process. Real quick, um, uh, Dustin yeah. pointed out in chat uh, do not use uh, full scans and safe mode repair on a remote session you will be booted into safe mode and lose uh, remote connectivity. Now, uh, the safe mode with networking mod 
is the one that you would uh, want to go into, but a lot of your remote tools do require you to use their process to reboot into safe mode with networking. So that is a good and very valid point, Dustin, that it depends on what remote software you're using. Like I know LogMeIn, if you reboot into safe mode with networking using D7.2, it would actually just reconnect you once it got into safe mode with networking. But other ones like I think Team Viewer and possibly Screen Connect um, and some of your other ones, they have special options to reboot into safe mode with networking and you have to use those tools to get into safe mode with networking <laughs> on your D7.2 scan stuff. So very good point. Sorry to interrupt you there, Proctor. But. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, he would have been using TeamViewer and he actually had to, to leave the office and go to the client site and reboot their computer. Uh, to finish his scan. Ouch. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of defeats the purpose of of doing it remotely. But. Yeah. But that's uh, if he had gone in and used TeamViewer to remote reboot into safe mode with networking, that should alleviate that problem for him. Just not yeah. use the safe mode with networking mod after that. So. Correct. Yep. Cool. Um, in the, the second malware column, uh, I'm going to run, uh, run some scans that are um, automated and do not uh, require me to click anything to continue or require any user input. Again, I do this so that I can, can start this system and come back to it later once it's completed a lot of the process. Um, just in the, in the interest of time, I'm not going to run any scans that are extremely lengthy. Uh, have Microsoft Security Essentials Quick Scan selected, uh, MCSoft Smart Scan selected. Uh, if you'll if you'll if you'll notice that some of these have icons and some of them don't, the reason is that these these programs I've actually used in D, this copy of D72 and they've already been downloaded. The ones with icons with the um, with the uh, D Cloud icon, those I have not downloaded onto this machine. But if I ran them now, they would automatically download the latest copy. Uh, I'm going to run Kaspersky TDSS Killer in silent mode. Good grief, that was a lot of beeps. That was a lot of beeps. Every, every device I own just beeped. Um, I'm going to run Hitman Pro. I'm going to take off JRT. Uh, in the third column, um, I already have pre configured apps that, scanners that are going to take a long time to run, uh, or take longer to run, and they're not as automated and will require some kind of intervention. Uh, I'm just going to select malware bytes and in the interest of time that's all we'll do. I'll also select auto runs to run and I have malware scan selected which is which is um, uh, defunct. I'm going to Click on the start auto mode to get this started. I have kill them all selected so that it is going to kill all non-essential processes while I'm working. Go ahead and get this started. And that will actually run kill them all in between each process as the uh, auto steps go through. Yeah. And the reason you want to do that is because malware may be trying to restart itself, and that kind of gives it a little bit more advanced. Uh, ability to try to kill that stuff. Uh, why wouldn't you use the Kill Explorer too? Um, normally I do. Okay, I was just curious, and that kind of gives is the same idea. It gives the D72 and the scanners it employs and things like that more of a chance to be able to delete and remove viruses without them actually being in use by the system anywhere. So. 
I, I have a question um, uh, to either of you, Brantley, or to Proctor there. Um, it, it, as far as your thing showing malware scans, should, it doesn't, haven't we updated that to show defunct? It's the same thing. It has two options. So oh, we just have, have both in there. Yeah, okay. okay. People that have malware scan in their list already don't have to go and change it. People I got gotcha. that don't can use defunct. Gotcha. Just wanted to clarify okay. that. Yeah, I, I didn't actually know there was an item labeled defunct. Yep, there is. Yeah, that there is currently. Okay, D72 is asking me to set Windows to automatically log in. Uh, this is useful, especially if you have a, if there's a password uh, on the system, so that it will automatically log in if Windows has to reboot during the malware removal process. And I'm going to turn this auto log on on. I don't have a password set. Can you can we touch on that a little bit too? Um, that auto login feature, and let me get back to my screen here. So, where it's asking for a password there, um, if you don't happen to know the current password that you're logged into, it will reset that password to whatever value put in there. So, if you leave it blank, it'll blank the password. If you type in a new password, it'll enter a new password in. And if so you keep do that in mind from the customer's perspective, yeah. Yeah, if you do know the customer's perspective or the customer's password, you'll type in their password and it'll leave it the same. Um, this is important to note, especially if you have someone that may be using user profile encryption. Uh, changing the password like that might not be the best idea. You may want to use their password. The other thing on top of that is that domain option. Um, for domains, it doesn't have the ability to change domain passwords because you have to have domain administrative rights and all kinds of things like that to do that for Active Directory. So you do have to put in the correct password in those cases and have the domain listed there. And finally, on Windows 8 and Windows 10 that uses uh, Microsoft accounts to sign those in. Those are so equivalent like to Active Directory. Yeah. So ones that have your live logins and things like that. I want to say that you use Microsoft account or something to that effect. But yeah. I also want to say when it shows up in the username, it'll have the domain prior to that. So you can just cut it out there, put it in the domain. Well, if you just use your Microsoft email address to, to log in for that, it should no, work. No, it has to have the domain listed there. Oh, okay. Maybe that's something we can improve for D7X. I really, because I'm pretty sure that mine just has the the name. It doesn't have a domain. I think so too. Yeah. My email, email, because I set mine up manually on my box here. I love shit. Yeah, yeah maybe we could just clarify that. Afterwards. We had tested it before and found that you do have to have the Microsoft account uh, in the domain. I'm pretty sure you don't. Not when it's in the auto logon setting. I think it just looks. I think it sees the at symbol and goes, oh, let me check. I mean, that should be the default behavior for it because whatever's after the at should be the domain, but it also gets but, synced but that's up. That's what I'm saying. It's not. That's not the domain in the case of a Microsoft account. Right, the and since there's no main, no domain because of that, it should, I would think, go, yeah. oh, let me see if it's a Microsoft account. Um, that would make too much I, sense, I, though. But I well, think it I does understand really. both. I understand both perspectives. But let's let's see if we can confirm that, if possible. Um, but that's the Microsoft accounts are also one that it can't set the password for, because it is set up like a domain password. Actually, it can. You can. You can set a password. You can set a domain password. I mean, why can't you? You probably could set a Microsoft password. Let me just try that. Sure. How how is it going to change my Hotmail login? No, it it's not. It's, it wouldn't it's do Microsoft that. It would change account. the local one. Yeah, it, 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 it's the Microsoft account. And then it might it actually it might it actually change. I don't know. No, no, no. Let me no, let me let's back up. I not use that. my email, my personal email address for my Microsoft account, and that's a Gmail. And Microsoft is not using Gmail's password. I set up my own password. With Microsoft, it's mm -hmm. completely different oh, yeah, than my Gmail well one, despite it using the same quote-unquote email address. So, so 
Damn it. My Windows 10 VM is fucked. I'll try to do it as well. Uh, Proctor, you want to go ahead and continue? Uh, yeah, yeah, do it in my machine. A lot of changes so that uh, your system will automatically reboot. Um, I have a laptop. I'll go get that in a minute. Uh, log on during the malware removal. All right. You'll see that kill them all ran. <laughs> and it shows um, you the window the first time in case you want to check any of the items that did run. So you can see, I think some of those look like bad processes already right off the bat. Yeah. And you'd be able to work with them and delete them there if you wanted. Yeah, or go ahead and delete them right here instead of continuing on. I think I'm just going to continue on. Yeah. I guess I could always add the option, though. It did, didn't occur to me, though. I mean, especially if it works with a Microsoft account, too, which I believe it will, but um, is to change the domain password and just quit, you know, with that login prompt. Before, I didn't want to do it because you don't want to do that, but maybe it would be just like a, an option because it's doable quite easily. Yeah, I'll just keep that in my head because I think I want to do that. I'm about to try it on my laptop here. We'll see what we get. Yeah, cool. Um, like, I know I did the login. I don't know about changing the password, but I know the login works. So uh, right now it's just going through some of the manual internal functions for anyone out there watching. Are we... Yeah, right now it's it's backing up the uh, the registry hive down at the the bottom. On, you can see the status of what's going on right now. It takes a little while to back up the hive, especially with a bloated registry. Like I'm sure is the case with a highly infected system, right? Well, it's a fresh install of Windows that I just. Infected a little bit. Oh, a little bit? <laughs> I don't know. The <laughs> definition of a little bit sometimes varies. I know when Brantley's done it in the past, it's been quite heavy. Yeah, I remember some horrendous uh, infections he came up with. Yeah, he, he goes out of his way for that. Almost makes you wonder. <laughs> I am good at breaking computers. <laughs> yeah. He's good at that. Hey, if it's yeah. worth doing, it's worth overdoing. <laughs> Apparently, I can't break one. But <laughs> Well, when you're under pressure, I can understand. Yeah. Um, and really, that's how I got into repairing computers and fixing computers is because I was so good at breaking them. Oh. I had to learn how to fix them. And well, uh, let me share, Brantley. Um, so when I was, uh, yeah, uh, that that's basically what happened to me. I got a, I, I, my family had access to an old 286 computer, and. Uh, and, and and I just had a whole lot of questions about it, and uh, they couldn't answer them. And inevitably, yeah, I would break shit, and you know, just through experimentation. And ultimately, I'd have to because I had no other avenue, and there was no internet back then. You know, the best I could do was get a book or or talk to somebody. Um, yeah, it got me into for fixing my own issues. And you know, before you know it, you you stop asking questions anymore, and you just rely upon your your own skills. Well, if I fix twenty problems, I can sure fix five more or whatever. Um, and, and that, I think, takes you down that path. And I, I wanted to point that out because a lot of people don't enter in quite that way. And um, I think without that, it's, uh, you know, you're not, you need to develop the troubleshooting and the, and the problem-solving skills early, basically. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, it's, uh, D7.2 has gone on to uh, perform some of the automated D7.2 functions. Um, one of those things is to remove system policies, and um, that's a spot that, that malware could, that could be an entry point for malware. I um, want to note that if you have um, CryptoPrevent installed, which uses policies to, um, uh, to prevent the execution of malware, that D7.2 would not remove those policies. Isn't that correct, Brantley? I'll answer that. It's not going with the latest versions. 
latest. Okay. I don't remember when I when I fixed that, but the last couple of versions of D7.2 won't. But like older, like D7 version, like if anybody's still using version two, it definitely will. And okay. Anything before that. Uh, is it is it all is it also going to remove policies that have been you know instituted on purpose by the yes. administrator? Yes. Okay. But those policies supposedly were done through the group policy editor and through a domain, so they will come back. They should come back once you log back in the domain. Yeah. Yeah, if it's going through a domain. But if you're yeah, so those group policies would be domain. recreated. Yeah. But but if you just use group policy editor on a standalone XP Pro machine, for example, then yes, those policies will be wiped and they will not come back. Obviously. But that's what D seven two does. I mean it removes the policy. So I mean, Right. So the malware is. Malware puts crap there, so. Right. I'd rather get rid of my. I'd rather make sure the malware is, is gone than mm. to, to leave anything in there. I know, but who writes policies? Who just. Yeah. I mean, how, how many few people out there, you know, mess with Group Policy Editor and have a professional version of Windows and then mess with it manually that aren't on a domain and then have to take their computer in for repair? E exactly. <laughs> you know? Pretty unlikely. All right. Um, it's currently downloading Microsoft Security Essentials to perform a quick scan. Does anybody else have any thoughts on the order in which you, you run things in the malware routine? I mean, I come in. I like to. I like to run the, all the automated stuff first. Yeah, that's that's my approach. And then I know. um depends depends on my mood. Well, yeah, and it also depends on other factors. If time is a concern, I'm gonna obviously abbreviate as much as possible. If let uh, me actually look at my copy. It's been so long since I actually. Yeah, you know, let me look at my copy. What do I do? Because there's some, I have some, some. I'm adamant about a few things there, and I haven't been paying attention to what you've been saying, so I'm sorry. I've been coding. All right. Figured that was okay. Yeah. Oh shoot! I don't have one set up. Mm. I was really liking to do defunct first. I know that myself. Yeah, and um, Brantley mentioned then, before that he prefers to run defunct first, and then like then do all the scans later. Well, I go um, half and half. If I'm on site yeah. and running these scans right now, I would probably have a copy of defunct open and searching through the other things mm -hmm. while these are waiting. Yeah. New feature I was discussing with Brantley yesterday, a new flag that I was going to add to custom apps that, that tells the custom app whether or not it can run simultaneously when in auto mode with other apps. So basically, like, I could do, you know, defunct or, or whatever else you could have run, like, and it would, instead of waiting on that, would just run the next item. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But, that's a, um, a D7X feature? Yeah. Yeah. It'll just be like an extra flag that you can just say, "Don't wait on me" or something. You know, I can run simultaneously. Um, Dustin mentioned that he likes to run uh, Revo and Installer first sometimes, so that he can clear out a bunch of things and then uh, get mm -hmm. through because it makes it makes sense. Faster for him. It makes sense. The uninstaller was one of the things. That and if, but but you know then there are the automated things that you want to do before every scan. So, like you're removing temp files and stuff, like you just mentioned about making things faster. But I guess some people don't want to move that because they'd rather an extra hour of scanning temp files if they get the extra results of yeah log logged with malicious stuff. I guess, but it's trade off. Yeah, your customers want to see that something got done, so you want to have something in your report to show them, hey, yeah, we did get some stuff off your system, but at the same and point, since you most of the stuff is going to be in temp files. Yeah, I know. So, and since most of the stuff is going to be in the temp files, um, the, uh, I mean, not like you know, probably not like the main infection, you know, like the main the file, 
you know, from from the startup or something. But like all the crap it's working with is in there. So I mean, chances are, if you do delete temp files first, you're going to get that that infected file in a log somewhere. The the main one at least. But the 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 I guess not doing that will give you like a lot more a lot more results. You know. If you're if you're looking for quantity, when you show your customers things, right? What I generally find some, is some if, the, if want, the computer some, well, runs you know, better people, when you get it back, and if it's faster, mm -hmm. if it doesn't redirect to strange web pages, uh, and the fun you know the functionality of the computer is better when they get it back, they don't really care, you know how how many infections you got off the system. Now, yeah, occasionally well, you there know, are a few people that have uh, super infected systems, and I like to. Tell them that we got you know three thousand things off their computer or whatever, and we right, right. Taking but that happens so much, and I, I see so many texts. And I was just about to get to that. And I see so many texts bragging about, oh, Malwarebytes found so many thousand items, and it's like that. No, that doesn't have anything. But really, that has nothing to do with like what, how many times you're infected or how many infections you have. No, you've got to break all that shit down, you know, and you probably find that it had one or two infections on it, and just, they created a lot of extra files, <laughs> I mean, it, right. you know, it's kind of dumb, it's kind of, it's kind of dumb to me, but. I agree. Some people really, do, some people really dig that, and don't get me wrong, I, I have been one of those people that go, but it was back in the adware days, it was like adware, it was like, oh, look at, look at this, it was like. And I mean, I got you know five digits out of outerware. But I, I think easily. those those times for us I mean, were more. You get over ten thousand on outerware. It's like, well, okay, let's <laughs> let's brag about it. But those yeah. times those times for us were like just kind of keeping a a record of who was the most infected person that we worked on that month. Like, hey, you topped the charts for this month for being the worst infection we have. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably see you again next week, but. Just letting you know, you might want to take a look at some of these suggestions that we have on keeping yourself infection free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do it different. I do a mix. I mean, it's if, if, from from what I can see from my 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 config that I'm looking at, it's kind of botched. But um, from what I can see and and remember, I do the the deuninstaller defunct stuff first, and then I go through. Um, I let it run through all of the um, D72 internal stuff and delete temp files and a bunch of junk like that in the first column. And in the second one, it's all automated junk. And in the third column, I have semi-automated slash manual. Yeah. And so I'll come back through and I have a second copy of defunct there. I guess I run it sometimes and don't. Some, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, yeah, a couple, a couple of minor scanners and. Like out of, uh, what, what, uh, you know, auto runs and stuff like that. Double check and stuff, but. Uh, yeah. So, just to let you know, uh, it's Windows 8 that has that issue for sure. Um, if you look at my screen here, you can see the Microsoft account is mm -hmm. put in front of the board at 369 at Hotmail. Mm -hmm. This one is the one that for this auto login to work, you have to cut this. Uh, yeah, okay. And put that here. All right, that makes sense. Okay, so just Microsoft account. So maybe you want to build, uh, you know, possibly for D7X, build in a fallback to to try it with Microsoft account or something, or have an option at least. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Want to fall because back automatic, you know, maybe, but an option. The username. Oh, calm down, Michael. The username it's pulling is the username from that registry value. The value that it writes is exactly what it pulls. If it pulls that value, it writes that value back. Well, for so auto login, weird, auto, weird. Login, auto login to work with Windows 8, you have to set it up like this. This is something mm -hmm. someone brought up to us earlier, and we went through and found that this was the case. Mm -hmm. That for them to work with the Microsoft account, they have to have the domain. Mm -hmm. like that. Where Windows 10, it does not show it like that. So maybe Windows 10 does handle the password stuff a little less domainy, but mm. Windows 8 8.1 8. Mm. does handle it. If like you can this. change the password. Yeah, great. So now my entire system is going to break. Well, no, you don't. Don't use that to change the password. I mean, use your actual password, just in case. That is your actual password for that VM, though. I'm sure, right? 
No, this is using my, that's what I'm trying to get across here. This is using my Microsoft account. You, if you're using a Microsoft account, you're using the password for this email. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't use my Gmail password. I can guarantee you that. Whatever your Microsoft account password is. So mm -hmm. if you I know, I know your, what if you set up I, I, your I, I, Gmail I, I know the Microsoft account has a different password stored online than the email address, but just try fucking changing it, please, in the way that I specify, not through that, is what I'm trying to get to you. How I think it'll work. Changing it how? Cancel. Same way you change a domain password. Pull up your command prompt. Just run. Use D7. What are you telling me to pull up the command? What? Uh, yeah, use D7 to pull up the command prompt. <laughs> you have to use D7. So now, you know, uh, do a net user and let's see if the... I, I mean, I know the guy's in there. Net space user. Oh. What is Brantley? That's the name that Microsoft uses for my user account on its login. Okay. So that is your email address that... Okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. The cool. email address is Microsoft login. Well, I, I, I know, go back. Just go back. Okay. Um, net space user space Brantley space foo space forward slash domain. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess it don't work. Oh, wait a minute. Do you have to put a parameter after domain? It's been so long since I did that. No, I guess not. No. Okay. All right. Yeah, their their quirky way of doing domains and Microsoft accounts is completely different than anything that was used before. Um. I'm going to try on my other system to see if I can change the password by just setting in a new password and not using the Microsoft account on a Windows 10 version. Oh, you know what? Michelle, let me do it without that. That... Oh, I should have told you not to run the Viper scan because that takes forever to download. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had I thought I had unselected it, but I guess I didn't. Um, and you may have just noticed, users or viewers, that uh, Proctor went and added Hitman Pro checkmark, and that is something you can do during auto modes. Is if you decide you want to run something or you don't want to run something, and it's not currently in the process of running that specific thing, you can add and remove those check marks real time. Mm -hmm. And every time it finishes an app, it goes back to the left column, starts from the top, and goes down for each column until it reaches a check mark. So if you wanted to go back and delete temp files again, after running Viper Rescue uh, Scanner, he could go ahead and check it now, and then once Viper Rescue Scanner uh, finished, it would go back and delete temp files again, and then move on to the next process. So those are real-time check marks you can add and remove there. So I find that's useful sometimes if if a particular scanner or process didn't run the way I wanted it to run the first time, and I wanted to rerun it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why he has that in there, I believe. Uh, I just tried net user Microsoft account slash user Microsoft account slash user at and a bunch of stuff and that didn't work either. So okay, I'm just saying okay, you're right. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, it's if it can't change a domain password, it, there's no way it's going to be contacted. You can you can service. change a domain pass. That's what I'm saying. You can change a domain password easily with the commands that I gave you. With the com but not with the auto login, which is what we started off on all of this. I know, but if you change the domain password, the reason why it doesn't work with the auto login prompt on on um in D7 is because I don't use the domain switch, but on, intentionally. I could well, easily. With using that command, don't you have to have uh, domain rights, or you just have to have the user's rights? I think you just have to have the user's rights to change his own password. Hmm. I mean, as long as it's your pass, you're yeah, you're the right. user. Yeah. Yeah. But then you yeah, would also but, have to have caveats of saying you have to be logged in as this user to be able to change the domain yeah. password. Well, I mean that would that would be easy. I mean that would I wouldn't have to say anything. That would be a simple D7 under yeah. the hood. Don't bother uh, people if it ain't possible thing. But um, yeah. Anyway, threat. Yeah, it's finding some stuff. Yeah, uh, malware scans are so much fun. If they just had like a soundtrack and and uh, you know, and maybe some uh, psychedelic lighting in the background, I think it would be far more enjoyable than just staring at this. Put that little dicky on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that safe for? Let me free. Yes. Please let me free. <laughs> that was oh. a good one. You know, are we all now fans of Mr. Dicky? I was Dickie. a fan. Hell yeah. Of He's Mr. Something else. He's Jewish. His, Mr. his Bird. last name's not Dickie. Bird. Yeah. David is. I think his first name was Dave. David. Yeah, David Bird. Mm. Bird is the word. I can't cut all of this out because we actually had some good stuff. I'm just going to have to cut just this specific portion out. While we're cutting the specific portion out, let's go ahead and say some more things. No, not while we're on air. We just lost that viewer because of all of this. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Did they really leave? Yeah. That's probably some way. They weren't leaving because of this. They're 30 seconds behind. I have to share my screen for just one second. Let me see if this works. Nope, it's not gonna work. Don't show. Um, don't show any uh, YouTube videos or customer. I'm not going to. And no product keys. Oh. Look. Yeah. Can you see this? What? Michael. Um. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Jeez. Hold on. I'm doing. 20 different things. I can see Johnny's... Yeah, I see that. I got that, and I know why, and I was just trying to type the answer. So give me a moment. Okay, well, now that's something else I had to edit out because that was a client name. They don't have to know that. Oh, that... Well, they do now. But it was a place, and it's something you could Google, so... Oh, yeah, that's true. But it's not one of our customers. Right. True. But still, it's not. Why would we be referencing it? We just support them <laughs> for no other reason. There you go, Michael. Well, we do. We support them, but we don't charge them, so it's okay. Uh, we do have a uh, a soundtrack, but we can't play that because then we'll get copyright notice for YouTube matching content. So. 
Yeah, I can't do that. The only the only soundtrack stuff we can have uh. is just either us making up a beat or something that we created on our own, or is a freely open. Ooh, beat. Tank! I still have some of the tracks we recorded way back in the day. Oh wow, those are original. Actually, I have about four gigs worth of our recorded sessions. Uh, the infamous headphone mic taped to the wall recording yep. sessions. Uh, it's it's not your bad, Dustin. Uh, it's fine putting it in the public chat. It's just we can't actually play it on air and have the sound coming out. Just oh, did I say four tank? I meant 14 gigabytes. Holy crap, how much did we do? Uh, we did a lot. I've got 14 gigabytes of recorded material, and that's at like 96k BPS bitrate MP3. It's not much. Wow. It's crappy quality. And well, we did record all pretty much everything we did. Yeah. For a while. Is all that music, or do you have us like just? <laughs> Wow. It's, yeah, it's it's like our sessions. So it's like us acting stupid and drinking and then playing music and then acting Man, stupid. Man, those would be fun to go back and listen to one day. Yeah, we'll have to do that next time you're here. Yeah, I was getting ready to say that. Because it's been a dozen years. I haven't heard anything that we did. Years. And probably a good ten. Yeah, since since then, really. That's awesome. I have some of it. I have some of it separated into tracks, and some of it separate, but mostly it's just different sessions. I don't, dude, I, that is awesome that you still have that stuff because hell yeah, what I had has been gone for years. So I would just like to throw out that I just confirmed that Windows 8 you do have to have the Microsoft account domain in. For Windows 10 they did change it. You don't have to have the Microsoft account in. That's probably why because I did it in Windows 10. I didn't keep 8 long. I'm trying to see if I can change the password using this. And have you it. can't. I, already tr I did try on my Windows 10. Then. Okay, so it's still slightly a domain account in the terms that you can't change the password because it's using your password from your online <coughs> Microsoft account. But in Windows 8, if you're using Windows 8, Signing into what? Uh, Signing into you have to have Microsoft account for your domain. If you're on Windows 10, you don't have to have that for your domain, just for anybody out there watching and interested. So, John, if you've previously uh, ran an app in D7.2 um, and it's already been downloaded, um, a new version comes out, the next time you run D7.2, will it run the version that's already been downloaded previously or will it check for a new version and download that? Depends on your config. Depends the, on custom app config the custom app has a config has a setting to download after so many days or... Or yeah, always. Usually, uh, once a day. I, what, what is the default? Is that? Well, no, like, well, no, it's there's like there's it's variations like for different apps. Different, yeah, different apps. Yeah. Different. Like some apps have a tight release schedule, so it's like a day, and then some apps are like a week. Most of your virus scanners are probably going to be a day, if not zero. The other ones, like I know, patch my PC. I think is set for five days. Various things like that. So. Well, the point is that it's completely configurable by the end user, um, you know, so if they did have a desire on a particular tool that they're using or have added to D7.2 even, um, you know, that's something to uh, make sure that's checked and set appropriately for the type of application. So you can control that, so... See, this is what I didn't like about numbers, is like tracking cookies, that's not really an infection, truly. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I A lot of times the, and this is what I did never liked, especially early on, you know, the more threats you found, the better your product was considered to be. So effectively, they were just trying to increase the number of threats that they do, and they found, and also the bad guys have found that to be a very critical marketing tool to... Uh, to defraud customers with is to tell them, oh, they have 10 million infections on their computer and, uh, oh, let me put some spyware or malware or something else on to, to, to uh, take that off. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's some, you have to understand, uh, cookies, 
Um, the other types of things, they, they might be a, um, an issue with personal information or privacy or, 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 or something uh, of that nature or maybe even tracking, you know, per se, but it's not, um, doesn't fall under the same category as, 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 as malicious. The, the, the damage that they do is, is pretty much your doing. It's not uh, anything that uh, has infected hey, you or anything else. Who is Uber Conference? It's an add-on for Google Hangouts that gives you a free phone number for people to call into your Hangout. Oh, nice. Ooh, I just found haven't we been Hangout. looking for something like that? Yeah. Um, we haven't been looking very hard because it's right there in the apps for that are included. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, well, RTMF? That's recent app? in a certain amount of time because it wasn't there a month ago that I looked. Or TFM, or yeah, or TFM. So, right? TFM, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I was just looking at this chunk, and um, let's see what the Soundation does. Create music with your friends in Google Plus Hangouts. Ooh, yes, let's start. I want to create music. I want to play music. <laughs> Rather. If I can open. Yeah, open. Yeah. So I can browse, can I open? Name, browse. Oh, it's not going to let me pull anything off my PC. That sucks. Oh, wait. All right, so now you're on to the manual ones, I see, Proctor. Yeah, we're over to the third column now. Um, now our bytes is running currently, updating. Um, while that runs, I just want to share my screen real quick and show people a very important setting I found, especially with me having got a uh, Wi-Fi pineapple. Uh, if you have a wireless connection on your Windows 10 system, I highly, highly, highly recommend you go into Manage Wi-Fi Settings and disable this Connect to Suggested Open Hotspots. Basically what that means is any open wireless that your computer sees in area, it's going to just go ahead and connect to automatically. Very, very, very dangerous to be doing that. I'm not even sure why they have that as a feature in Windows 10. Because before, if you connected to a unsecured wireless network in Windows with your wireless card, it gave you a very stern prompt that your stuff is going to be visible, don't be doing this. But now they've made it so that it just automatically connects to it. That is crazy. So anyone that has wireless, I would recommend going ahead and turning this off. I'd probably also say go ahead and turn off this uh, connect to network shared by my contacts because I don't know anyone that would share their Wi-Fi password through their contacts like that either. So I just remembered that and wanted to throw that out there while we're doing this. Not sure what happened, but Malwarebytes is not scanning automatically in D72 closed. It, it won't scan automatically. Oh. Yeah, it's been that long since I've removed malware yeah. from something. Yeah. Malwarebytes don't let you do that anymore. Yeah. Okay. It's in their license agreement that it, you have to, you can't automate their scanning and functionality. Yeah. Uh, D72 shouldn't have just closed, though. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Um. Oops. That Uber conference wasn't a good idea. Huh? 
I said that Uber conference wasn't a good idea, apparently. <laughs> that that was no. It was I was playing with the sound app and I was trying to import a very large file. Oh. But um, the explanation is that um, actually I'll have to look at the config for it. But I think D seven two shuts itself down during the run. Ouch. During malware bytes. Is there a log? Do you have the debug logging on? We can look at that. Oh, I may not. But it, it shuts it. It's, you know, so during some of the apps, it shuts itself down so it doesn't get terminated. I think it might be doing that in malware bytes. I'm not sure. I okay. don't believe so. I didn't last think it did that with malware bytes. Yeah, last time I, I didn't think it. it. I'll be honest, I didn't think it did either, but I forget half the features I. I code it into the, th the app, so I, <laughs> you know, into D7 sometimes, so who knows, man. It's not like, I mean, Malwarebytes is something that I've updated quite a bit because they change a lot of things, and now they don't let you do anything, uh, excuse me, anything, so <laughs> anything automated. Yeah, I would say it's one of the most frustrating third-party apps out there. Yeah, it's a little weird. And, and you know, it would be fine. It would be fine if they just realized that um, no one's taking their butter by letting them automate a few things. No one's it's not doing anything. <laughs> No one's. They, they did it because they did it because um, they released that TechBench version of Malwarebytes that no one knows about and because it is very expensive, and no one talks about it because it's very very expensive and um, more limited. And of course, all you can do is run Malwarebytes, but it is automated. Uh, Dustin says that that same issue with D7 closing out while running Malwarebytes has happened to him before. But uh -huh. if you open up D7.2, it picks right back up where it left off, which is yeah, it better. what it's supposed to do there. So, um, hmm. Cool on I that if point. I wonder if, that's, if it's just closing it out. Yeah, we'll have to check more into that one. Um, got awful quiet in here all of a sudden. It's because um, it looks like uh, Brantley went to talk to Johnny uh, in the other room, so and they put themselves on mute, so we don't we no longer have their breathing or any other ambient noise. Well, that's that's the that's what it is because I keep, you know, I keep hearing the and like the white noise and stuff and yeah yeah um i don't know quiet. how much mine picks up but i'm 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 assuming it picks up when i suck on the the um we do sound like a bunch of robots with asthma in here <laughs> yeah with the, yeah <laughs> with <laughs> Well, you know, because we we all love the vaporizers, so this is, shouldn't be anything new to to our our fans out there and our, our viewers. Um, so we apologize uh, for that if if that's something you hear. No, we're not robots, and we're not uh, uh, on asthma inhalers. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so um, almost said out of where malware bites has finished, and I'm gonna uh, remove all the selected. Malware components. Seventy-seven. This was actually a, a good one, Proctor, because this system doesn't look like it's infected, but clearly it is. Yeah. All right. Malware bytes is asking to restart. What's what? what what's y'all's opinion on restarting it? During um, the malware removal phase, so Dustin well, actually it'll pick back in, up. Yeah, Dustin actually put in here that usually when malware bytes finishes, the computer is restarted and D72 will start automatically. So yeah. I would say that would be the preferred way, especially if it's closing out D72 now, which yeah. that may be a new functionality that malware bytes has put in is closing out. Uh, third-party applications. Before. Yeah, obviously, I, I think that's clear. Which, that, that, didn't that's, they? Didn't they just buy JRT? 
And yes. One yeah. That, yeah. So they took that functionality out of JRT and added it into malware bytes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so. Uh, well, I I I don't get that because JRT is a batch script, and you can just you can see what's what it does and what's in it right there. Why do they well, a need to buy it, and why do they b need hey, to rip don't, it off? Don't argue There's, with them because one of these days maybe they'll be giving us some money too. So. No, nah, no. Nah. But the, but why would they need to rip off? Um, why would they need to rip off like? Why JRT's would they need that? code for their own? Yeah. They, yeah, they, they don't. Why? That do makes that. no sense whatsoever. I think um, they purchased the uh, JRT because um, of some other reason, but I don't know what that is really. I think uh, maybe Proctor. it was just a. I'm sorry. Proctor bro broke his uh, VM. Yeah, yes. Neat. How'd you do that? Oh, uh, just 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 close it and restart it. Oh, oh crap! Right from the boot um, Oh, you got a you got a floppy disk in there or something from when you installed it. I bet or CD. Floppy disk. You installed. Yeah, it. I got a floppy disk in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Okay. It is the case, right? I'm right, right? There's a CD. In or there. Are you joking? Are you joking on me? Because no, I, I use one. Oh. I, I didn't even see what OS it was, but I always have a floppy on my um, VM when I install XP because I use the the SATA. Um, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was just a guess. Do you, do you have a USB or any storage other configured? No, I don't. Weird. You just broke your VM. What'd you, what was the last... Okay, what was the last thing you did in D7? No, you just did malware bytes. Malware bytes. Broke oh, malware bytes. Starting it. Broke the, the boot medium. That don't make no sense. Yeah. Shouldn't mess it with is. this. That is really weird. Unless they did really just copy JRT because there was some stuff in there. I had the hard drive out of the boot order. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> do that. Uh huh. Yeah, that'd be an issue. Why yeah. did you. Never mind. Yeah, well, let's not even get into it. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Making no sense. But... Now what's it doing? Yeah, look at it. It's loading up now. All right, so now we've rebooted and D72 is loading up. And it doesn't start automatically running, I don't think, because it Oh no, it does. Awesome. Ye of little faith. No, I thought there were times where it wouldn't start because it, you may want to check on other things as to why it crashed out, but you must be thinking of something different. Okay, what do I got? What do I got? Oh, yeah. Hack me. Okay. Acmico. Apparently, defunct has already run, and then it also can went ahead and ran Matt Malware Bytes Anti Rootkit, which was in the list after defunct. Yeah, because it defunct isn't set to pause 
it's so yeah. you can use it yeah. while using other things. And I said that earlier. They, I used that in the example of what I was talking about, but it... Oh, gotcha. Come on. Yeah, but it, it, it's internal, so it doesn't. It does different. Um, I do not have good whitelists. This is going to be a... Oh, good. A mess. <laughs> Uh, but this is defunct, which is a super powerful tool for drilling down into the file system and in the registry. Um, this is a um, D72 uh, core application. Uh, the f divided up into tabs. The first fat tab is file system inspection. Um, in the left pane here, um, under smart directory scans, the first one is suspicious files. I clicked on this, and it scans for files that are known to be or files that are suspicious. Um, what exactly is it looking for in the suspicious files? I can't tell you exactly. Okay, suspect files. I mean, there's there's there, various various locations yeah. and various files that shouldn't be in certain locations, and it's looking for things like that. So. Anything no, just is, things that don't make sense. Yeah. By my own judgment. And well, this this time it didn't it didn't find any suspicious files. And the next option is for all temp directories. Uh, there are a couple items in the temp directory. I'm going to delete them. They're already checked. Click delete. <sighs> yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Uh, the next section are the user profile directories, and the first one is the startup folder. Uh, there are no items in there. Maybe I do have whitelists on this one. And good thing to point out is ideally what you want to do is go through this and find nothing in any of these windows. If you do find something, that means it's something you haven't whitelisted before, and you want to re investigate into that file and then whitelist it if necessary or delete it if necessary. The next one is downloads. And you're generally going to find a bunch of things in downloads. Um, and this is actually all the malware that I just downloaded to infect this system. Um, I'm going to check all these for deletion. And show off show off that file inspection on one of those malware yeah, ones. Trying to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I noticed that none of them are in the malware hashes, but I don't know when you've updated that, so I don't know even when it I don't updates itself. I have to check in that check into that. Yeah. But we can see right now that virus total is flagging that one yeah. as being bad too, so Yeah. And another one is it's not being signed, so that's definitely a, a red mm -hmm. flag there. Which is why they're red. <laughs> and none of these Red items are truly, yeah, go ahead and delete this kind of thing. These are all just, you might want to look here and see why. Because there are certain mm -hmm. things, uh, VirtualBox, a lot of their drivers that they throw into Windows for their guest editions aren't signed. And that's because they manipulate mm -hmm. some of the Microsoft. Hey, but, stuff um, well, so. they're, I hey, think they're around problem. that. I think they're signed now, but, 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 um, but still, it's relevant what you said. Proctor, click on a virus total one that has a virus total match. And so some of the ones that don't have virus total matches is because the file's not getting uploaded to virus total, just the hash is. So if if virus total has never scanned that file before, you won't get a result. I just wanted to, to show off that you can click on the virus total thing and it'll pull up the virus total website. Now, obviously that's broken. Because we, we, we noticed that the other day, actually. And it's some, something's wrong with the internal browser. I don't know. For displaying the site, I'm not sure what the deal was. But hmm. I'm just going to put that somewhere else. or I don't know. I'll look at it. It's getting rewritten right now anyway. So, but I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. <laughs> oh, there it is. What is that? Why it didn't come up for me the other day. But that was incredibly slow. It was incredibly slow. Well, that's just weird. Well, let's just pretend I didn't say what I just said, and there we go. <laughs> it works.
But, you know, at least you can see what's flagging it by doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the file inspection and defunk are, are tools to help you determine whether or not files are malicious or unwanted. Um, you, know, you also need to use some common sense in determining you know, what you want to get rid of and what not to get rid of. Common sense, man. That's a, a novel concept. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and delete all the items that I've selected in this section. And then the next, the next one will be what's uh, the desktop. The only thing on my desktop is a D72 folder. I'm not going to delete that. Um, the next one is the start menu. And I noticed some of the malware that I installed. And this is exactly what I find it so useful using defunk um, because normally after you clean out all this malware it doesn't remove locations like this or some of the leftover files so people would go into their start menu and have all these broken links and that's something you want to make sure you check as a tech is that things like that they're not going to run into it takes a little bit of extra manual time but it saves you so much time and uh, face later because it, nothing worse than having a customer take a computer home and come right back the next day or next hour and be like what is this why is this what is this yeah why is this link broken why didn't you fix that or yeah they may even think the malware is still there because they still see the icon for it exactly so that is definitely very helpful in these items Next one, we have app data and program data. I'm nothing in there. Perfect. Surprised. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Do you want to go through the custom? Um, I mean, you can show it off if you want. Just show some of the options that you have in there. Uh, here you have a lot of options to customize um, what's being looked at in the file system. Uh, I'm so glad that you finished the rest of that sentence. I thought you were just going to be like, here you have a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, show them off if you want to show them some of the options. And then you're just like, here you have a lot of options. <laughs> 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 Click on this and see what happens. Um, so to detail some more about this, basically you can uh, pick and choose what kind of files you want to show up, um, like executable files or... Uh, document files, various things like that. Um, you can also filter them out for what you don't want to show up and things like that. Um, then you have some really nice features on the right side there, especially like if this is a customer that you cleaned an infection out for a week ago and you know their system was clean, they bring it back into you two weeks later and it's reinfected. You can search for just that amount of time and find that just the files that have been created in those two weeks since the customer picked up the computer. Very, very helpful to cut down on your scan time and make things go a little bit faster so you don't have to search through as much. Um, then, if you're providing warranties on your virus removal, it would also let you know that they got reinfected and it wasn't just something you missed. Exactly. Then you do have a few more options there. We won't get into a lot of them. You can disable whitelisting so you can see everything that if you have, you thought you might have whitelisted something accidentally. Um, you can disable whitelisting there. You can add some more filters to include only certain uh, wildcard matches, exclude wildcard matches, various things like that. So lots and lots of options in there. Each section does have its own custom scan section so you can do that plus there's actually a menu option that you can enable this menu for each one of those folder locations so you can customize it and set it um, another good thing to remember is when you close out of this or scan now it will save these settings so the next time you do it those same options will be checked for that folder location Uh, you have to hit rescan, reset rescan, 
or click a different one. Yeah. You see that the, they did settings did save. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go on down to the Windows directory scans and start with the task scheduler. Uh, looks like there are no task scheduled in the task scheduler. Um, many times malware will use the task scheduler to, to reinfect the system. Uh, but on this one, it looks like we don't have anything there. Uh, nothing in the downloaded programs folder. Um, System 32. Can have a bunch of stuff in here, probably. It's not whitelisted. Maybe not. Yeah, not that much. So some of those I probably would be checking into. Uh, Code Jock, we know, is for Windows. Nick might want to have that as an internal whitelisting. HHE is a Microsoft Windows file. Yeah. Do you actually know what that HH is? I do not. Uh, so that's the Windows help file launcher. Uh, it's termed something different for the H double H portion, but like if you do a, a start run uh, right now, just go ahead and yeah, start run. All right. Yeah, and then just type in HH space. Uh, Oops, sorry. Uh, put a space and then put a web address in there. So uh, HTTP www.foolishit.com. That's it. Yeah, and hit OK. So that will launch the. Uh, Microsoft Help Viewer, and you can see that that actually will browse the web. I actually learned about this at another remote support job I had, and since they didn't have things like the Microsoft or the D72 Windows internal browser, if the customer's browser was broken, this was almost certainly a way that you could get to a web page and work with the web page. It's similar to the internal browser. Like you can see, it doesn't have any of the third party utilities. It doesn't have any of the JavaScript reading. It doesn't have any of the stuff that malware could infect and break. So you can get to other web pages and work with things. Uh, like if we were trying to download a tool, we would do HH space then go to the tools download site and download it that way. I, I just wanted to throw it out there since it came up and I knew that little bit of knowledge about that HH file. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And since we know that's a, a good file, we could go ahead and whitelist that uh, by checking it and then clicking the whitelist button. Yep. So now future scans, that file won't show up in here and we'll, uh, won't have to look at it. You can go ahead and do that for that code jock one too. I'm just going to go through this list real quickly. Uh, some Microsoft file. Uh, Explore.exe is a Microsoft file. Microsoft file. Microsoft. Microsoft. And just to throw out there for anyone watching, normally if I saw a Microsoft file where it said the company was Microsoft and it said it was not signed, I would probably still research a little bit more into that file and find out why it was coming up like that. And it looks like it may just be taking a little extra time to scan those items. But I would double check on those because if it's not signed, that's the easiest way for malware to infect a Microsoft file is they replace it with their own version. Obviously, if they've changed it, it's not going to have the same digital signature, so it'll show up as not signed. 
but it will still say the company is Microsoft. So if it says it's signed in Microsoft, normally you're A-OK -okay whitelisting it and being fine with it there. If it ever comes up and says it's Microsoft and not signed, that's where you might want to red flag it and be like, let's look a little bit more into it. Just because most everything Microsoft does, they're going to sign. They do miss a couple every now and then, but. <sighs> yeah, it's they do. They there are a few that they don't sign. Yeah. And, uh, but that's it's worth researching. Into those yeah, always. Than not so. All right. Um, that takes care of that section. Didn't find anything malicious or anything I wanted to remove there. Uh, move on to the system 32 drivers folder. Um, all of these look like good files, but I'll go through the list anyway. Got the Broadcom network driver. What the F? Intel driver, Broadcom, Microsoft file. And again, what you're looking for is things out of the ordinary. If you see Broadcom and Intel files and you're on an in Intel system with a Realtek Ethernet driver, you might want to look more into it, but usually you're okay with driver files. There are some uh, advanced any or advanced malware that do use drivers to interact with system level things. So, all right, didn't find anything here. I'm gonna move on to the system 32 DLL cache. Like nothing there. Gonna move on to the program files directory. Hey, Nick, oh, hmm? Hmm? for that files inspection window, I was just noticing, and this is more UI pretty, but I know you're working on this at the same time, so yeah. Um, when he has that file inspection window and clicks on a yeah. different location, that should probably hmm. either clear out or close out. Like yeah. Proctor, if you go oh. to the other one now. If I go to another section... Oh, to another section. Old okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that file's in the previous section, but yeah. I've gotten so used to just closing that manually that I almost don't know that I'm doing it. But if it's going to open up when you click on something else anyway, what? Well, I'm, I I would have said just leaving it open's fine, but maybe clearing out the file that's listed there. Hmm. Well, see, um, that's actually uh, nothing I'm going to, I mean, really? It's just, like I said, it's just a UI thing. It's not anything major. Well, I know, and the other UI thing is is that I was I was contemplating having an option for that to open up, you know, a new window every time, not like the same window, uh, even, but... But 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 the idea that I, I I was just working through some ideas and and having multiple of like of those windows for comparison. But yeah. But well, then again, then again, um, I also am implementing the the recording of all of the data that gets inspected there, so that you can go back and look at it later through the report uh, yeah. interface, which would take care of that, I guess. And I was I was gonna say, you know, my my. Uh, UI opinion on having too many windows popping up all the place. I don't like it. No, no, you're... <laughs> but yeah. I think if you moved on, if you've moved on to a new section, you probably don't need to see that anymore. It'd probably be better for it to close out than to stay open. Yeah. Well, that that begs another issue because you keep talking about new sections, but. Um. I guess you I might was, want to leave that open. I was going to get rid of um, all the different sections, really. But at least I have to explain it. Yeah. More, I have to draw. I have to draw this out. 
Yeah, we'll have to see it because I I like the sections because there's certain times that I'll only look at look at certain sections, and the time it would take to scan the entire hard drive, you're pretty much looking at a uh, a lot of files all at one place to look through, and like this makes it so it's easier to quickly look through things and mm -hmm. like all right, that section's fine. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I know. I, I, w I wanted you to be able to define your own, though, uh, okay. um, sort of. But I, I had an idea for combining them all still. You know, like a one button goes through the whole, you know, everything kind of thing. I got gotcha. you. And puts it all in the same. So it's checking all those locations but putting it in one spot. Yeah, 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 kind of. That's what I was talking about. Kind of like like all of the different crap on the left. Like you could go to that different crap individually, or you could click a button that does all of that at the same time. Yeah. And I want you to be able to define your own. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess that doesn't well, I mean, make a that's, difference. That's what that custom partition scan at the bottom was for. I thought. I mean, that's exactly that's exactly what that's for. But I want to be able. I want you to be able to create those. Yeah. You know, like with your own paths and. Yeah. I like it having it as an option, but I'd say leave mm -hmm. these in as kind of the. Hey, here's a good workflow. Add your own yeah. additional. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I found I learned my lesson about not giving default stuff already. Uh, hmm. right. awesome. Program files is our last section. You're going to do see that this is uh, one of the malware, some of the malware that I installed. I'm going to select all those and delete those directories. And that uh, concludes the file uh, system inspection. I'm going to move on to the registry inspection. Um, the first item is embedded JavaScript. Don't have anything there. Uh, in the software hives, I'm going to move to look at uh, the run and run once values. Only thing in there is D72, which I want. I do want that to run. Uh, legacy load and run values, nothing there. Windows shell values, nothing there. Known DLL. I'm not going to go through every item in this list. I'm not, I can glance through it and see that it looks like everything in there is okay. Uh, zero items in the win login notify keys. <sighs> Excuse me. Start menu internet. All these items look good. Search scopes. Doesn't look like anything in there has been altered. Browser helper the objects, none of those. Uh, the next section will be the system hive and Windows services. This is going to be a big list. Uh, what you'd want to do is to go through this list and determine if there's anything in there that looks uh, out of sorts and then uh, maybe research it. Uh, determine if it's actually a Windows service or something that you need to get rid of. I'm not going to go through this this list right now. Any comments, Brantley? Uh, no, but I, I do know that a lot of uh, malware will use services, but those are more like the advanced ones that would uh, do those other ones that we were talking about earlier. So. Um, and a lot of those sometimes, once their files get deleted, those services are innate anyway, so they're not really that big a deal. And these aren't even really things that users would end up looking at, so it ends up being okay. Um, yeah, I think you can move on from those. And I mean, pretty much for the rest of the, the registry stuff, it's the same concept we did with the file inspection. 
um, research, find, whitelist. Some of the items you can't whitelist in here because there's no reason to whitelist them. Things like the start menu ones, you want to be able to see those things at certain times and some other ones in here. So uh, if the whitelist won't work on them, that's to be expected for it. So um, I think we can probably go on to the other tabs. All right, registry hijacks. Um, if there was anything in here that, that uh, was not uh, okay, not okay, it uh, would actually flag it. Um, the user init is something that often gets changed. Um, it looks appropriate. Yeah. Really appropriate. Can, you can always use the default one there. Yeah, you can check the default and it'll just change it to the default. Yeah, and you can see a lot of them have the use default option, so you can clear them out and use what their regular stuff would be for. The big important thing on here is make sure you apply changes and then hit repopulate to make sure there's not any malware that's still reinfecting these locations. Um, these are kind of a little bit outdated. Uh, they still get used from time to time, but this was something back in the XP days that Nick and I would constantly fight with having uh, malware change these locations. Like we would find something would be wrong with it, we'd change it, and then we'd go back into the registry and it's changed right back again, and that's because the malware is still running somewhere on the system changing these values, and that's what that repopulate button's for is so that you can be aware something's out there actively changing it, so you may need to check some other places and try some other things. Uh, the next tab is NTFS junctions. Um, use this tab to scan for, for NTFS junctions. And a lot of these do get used legitimately. Again, what you're looking for is things that are out of place. Um, these scans can take a while, so be patient when you do the scan. I think there's a quick scan and a full scan option, if I'm not mistaken. I thought there was too, but I don't see it. Yeah, no, there's not. Um, but yeah, the, the junction scan can take a while, and again, you will see a lot of legitimate junctions, especially on Vista Plus. Microsoft has all those... NTF junctions, NTFS junctions for uh, documents, folders, and redirects, and things like that from their previous file system so that uh, legacy programs and apps can still work and run fine. So, But you'll see a lot of other programs will use them too, and basically it's just another tool to research and find more about what's showing up there so that you know more, plus you'll be able to understand more. Um, Dustin said in the chat that or suggests that I go ahead and start running this uh, anti rootkit scan while I'm while I'm working with defunct. Yeah, and that you and that's do that. like I was saying. That's why I normally will go ahead and start up defunct and work with that while it's running the automated scans and things like that. Especially if I'm on site, I'll have something to be doing while those scans are all running and uh, be able to go from there. It sucks to be on site twiddling your thumbs looking at a malware scan while the client's looking over your shoulder. Yeah, unless you like to talk, mm -hmm. which most technicians Which I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And the last and final tab, uh, the host file. Um, this uh, will show you the Windows host file. Um, if you had um, IP addresses or, or um, domain redirects, basically, in here, um, you'd probably want to get rid of them. Um, um, Super Anti-Spyware does edit, is something, that, a third-party app that, that does edit the host file and put in and, and, and blocks um, malware using the host file. But in most cases, if you find anything in the host file, you want to probably get rid of it. Yeah, and you can I do that with more either anyway, but just overriding with the default. Uh, yeah, you can just override it with the default. And in most all cases, that's going to be fine. Any of those third-party tools that add those uh, host files, you can go back and use that third-party tool again. It'll add them back in. You'll know for sure that it was clean to start off with. So, um, There are a few more features I wanted to touch briefly on. Uh, that search box up in the top, you can search the file and registry system all at once. 
Um, very helpful if you're looking at a file and trying to figure out where it is, if it's coming back from somewhere else. Um, and it's doing both the file system and the registry th for that. Um, another common and tool that we would use. You for. also don't have to wait for it to finish before while you're doing other things. That's yeah, you nice. can just let those run in the background while it's work while you're continuing on with defunct. So, mm -hmm. um, the last thing I want to go to is if you jump back over to the file system, I think will be the easiest one to show it off. Uh, go to that system 32 that had some files in there. Um, the, the filter results is what I wanted to touch on. So uh, just pick out, or just type in exe, and then say filter results. So now it just shows you the exe results in there. So. Um, very quick, very nice filtering. Um, this is especially helpful if you're in the program files, especially in the, like the custom scan for the program files and a lot of the not really infected files, but part of the files for those infected folders or junk malware won't get removed, but you can use this to filter out those specific files and then select all, delete one quick swipe. So very, very nice filter result. If you ever want to see what was in that window again without having to go to a different section and then come back to this section, you can just hit that reset, uh, rescan thing there. And that'll show you them all again. So um, just wanted to point out those few features. And then also we had mentioned on some of the prior D7 overviews that we did yesterday and a couple days ago that you can use this for offline scanning. So if you're on a TechBench computer, you have the hard drive hooked up, or if you're on a Windows PE computer, you can use that uh, uh, destin destination on or destination one and select an offline drive and look through the Windows folders and the various folders on a offline partition or drive if you have one attached. So I think that about covers it there. All right. I'll go ahead and close defunct. Um, the only other thing I want to say in there is really if you get your whitelist really well and you know what you're looking at there, you can actually clean up an entire system without using any scanners or any uh, other functionality, just using defunct. And the more you use it, the faster you'll be with it, the quicker you can clean up systems. I mean, if you don't have to wait for uh, an hour or two worth of scans and you can just use defunct, that's normally the way that I would go. Um, and that's normally why when I start uh, auto mode there, I'll go ahead and run defunct at the same time while those scans are going on, just so I can go ahead and cut down on some of that stuff that it's going to scan through or flag and make everything a lot quicker, faster for the long run, basically. And if I get through defunct before some of the scans are finished, I might even just cancel the scans because they're probably not going to find anything of value or worthwhile uh, deleting there. So, um, What other ones do you have on your malware uh, routine to go through here? Um, the ones I have selected are auto runs and just system restore point. Yeah. Um, so while this malware scan or anti-rootkit scan is running, you could probably go ahead and double click on auto runs and just run through that one real quick while it's uh, doing its thing. So again, you're not limited on your functionality here. You don't have to wait on the scan. The scanning automation is nice because if you have other computers to work on, you can go do other ones and know that it's still going to be doing stuff while you're working on other things. But if you're sitting in front of it, you can pick and choose and run things as it's going while other processes are going. Normally, though, I don't recommend running multiple scanners at the same time because really you're limiting your speed there, making things run twice as fat, twice as long because it's 
both of them are trying to access the hard drive and scan different locations at the same time. Plus you run into the possibility of having files that one of them scanning, the other one tries to scan it, and they're locked and fighting each other for it. So just things like that. All right. In auto runs, I'm basically just going to look for, I'm looking for um, um, files that are missing uh, so that I can just clean up the registry and also look, um, looking for anything that um, looks like it shouldn't be there. Uh, this one right here, the file not found, is actually a part of Hitman Pro. And I can go ahead and get rid of that. I don't see anything in here that is um, – do you know what this is, Brantley? Uh-uh. What, what is its default database entries or database? WMI database entries. Uh, it's Windows stuff. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Um, before you close out of there, though, I would like you to click on Options menu. Up at the top there. Yeah. And then uh, scan options. And I normally click on the verify code signatures and uh, check the virus total and submit. Yeah. And then rescan. Uh, yes, to agree to the virus total thing. Also in options. I go ahead and hide Microsoft entries as well. Oh, yeah. Because when it hides entries for Microsoft and Windows, any of those uh, unsigned files will show up as not verified under that uh, uh, name part there where it has the company names, Oracle, things like that, Google. Um, when you When it's not verified, it'll still show up even though you have those hidden. So, um, and you can see that cuts down on your list significantly, but it also gives you that verified ability, and that's the digital signing part. So those are things I like to enable for auto runs myself. Yeah, that's about it there, I think. Get scan is still running. Uh, one of the things I like to do at the end of the uh, end of the process is to reset browsers to the defaults. Um, this will reset Internet Explorer and Firefox to their defaults without deleting bookmarks. Call. Um, I was just saying good call. And normally after a malware scan, I'll usually go through the internal uh, windows or the repair on and just do the internal D7-2 ones because a lot of your malware can sometimes break Windows functionality. It's just good to have those in there. And that would probably be where I would throw things like the reset uh, internet browsers and uh, set home pages, set DNSs, things like that. Um, and then same, I would probably go through maintenance and do a little bit more cleanup for anything left over just to make sure it's clean, clear, updated, and all that. Yeah, I'd, I would normally do the same. Um, the malware routine finished, and it created our, our reports, uh, various different reports, the malware scan report, uh, scan or scan reports for the different scanners that we used. Um, you have all those reports there in the malware log section. And you can email those to yourself, put them on your FTP, 
and uh, also excuse me. work with them at the end of uh, session doing the same thing. So, um, Also good to note if you want to save uh, something in your reports, anything that you put in that reports folder will be handled just like a report at the end session. Um, that comes into play probably the most under that audit, diagnose, and repair, or whatever tab. Okay, I wanted to take a quick look at the repair tab. Cool. Uh, some of the things you have in here, system file checker, uh, repair file permissions, repair windows update, uh, repair WMI, basically has a, a lot of different um, repair functions to repair various different parts of Windows. Um, this is extremely useful and saves a ton of time opposed to doing it manually. Uh, reset networking is something that I use quite a lot. Yep. And a, a lot of specific functions. Well, I was just going to say a lot of those places, especially the ones you just mentioned, are things that malware will break if you forcibly remove them with a scanner or through defunk. So using this uh, right after you do a malware scan is almost always recommended, especially with your more heavily infected systems, just because there's normally going to be some leftover Windows issues because it's expecting certain things from the malware and once you remove those, it can break Windows functionality after that. So almost always when I do a malware removal, I run repairs and then maintenance right after it. So uh, Not too much on the specific ones other than don't run the register all DLLs. Uh, just because that's kind of a last case uh, scenario. Like if you're having... Uh, DLL issues or things not registering properly, you can run that and it'll do just what it says, but there's certain DLL files that you have to register a certain way, and anytime you would run that register all DLLs, you would want to run that register IE DLLs right after it, because a lot of Windows depends on IE DLLs and those have to be registered a specific way. And yeah, yeah, there's some switches for them that you can't just reg SVR32 slash S or, you know, whatever people do. You can't just do that. They require special whole things. Yeah, so those, and those uh, windows depends on a lot itself internally. So you want to make sure you run that afterwards. And again, registering all DLLs is going to be something that you only want to do as a last resort because it can break other things while it may fix what you're trying to fix. So just be aware that um, a lot of these functions, like we said, D7.2 is extremely powerful. If you don't know what a function is, definitely find out more about it. Ask us here. We have our live show uh, five days a week now, so anytime we're here, feel free to ask us about specific ones or email us. We'll be more than happy to help with you that way. Foolish tech at foolishit.com, sales at foolishit.com, support at foolishit.com. And yeah, I think that's about all there. And we are way past our hour time limit, but lots yeah. and lots of good content here. Yeah. So more than worth it. We can go over the repair and maintenance ones probably in another show. Definitely do the audit diagnosis testing one during another show. Um, even data operations and offline operations, we could probably do in another show. So, yeah, the audit diagnosis and testing uh, there, you can you can test a lot of uh, uh, various different things with the web browser to make sure that you actually have corrected all the problems on the computer. Yeah, and I, so you it's a good thing to something find out with with things not working. Yeah, it's a good thing to find out before you start working on a system to find out what's wrong with it and after you finish working on a system to make sure everything is working on it. So, yeah. Good, good options there. Excellent work, Proctor, and I think your system is now clean so you can use that VM however you'd like. <laughs> I think I'll format it first. Huzzah! <laughs> So good deal. Uh, if anyone's out there, and we'll hang around here for about five minutes, but if you join us at 
foolishit.com slash live. We have a live chat there. You can jump in the chat and talk directly to us. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions here. Um, we'll have this video posted again, so if you missed any of it, we'll post it on our YouTube channel after we edit a few little items out here and there. <laughs> speed up some malware things. Don't you wish you were watching the whole time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's out now. Um, but yeah, if you want to jump in the live chat, we'll be here for probably five more minutes or so. Um, yeah, that was that was a good good one, Proctor. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, sure thing. Um, Actually, I learned a few things I didn't know about D7. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, hopefully Dustin was watching the whole time, too, and maybe he learned a few things. Yeah, I think he uh, was most of the time. Dustin, if you are still watching, uh, anytime you see anything weird, like the malware bytes thing where it closes out and restarts and stuff like that, go ahead, jot it down, walk over, let Proctor know, and he'll get it back to us so we can get those kind of things corrected. That's the kind of thing we're really looking out for, so more than happy. I mean, you have almost direct access to the developer, so take advantage of that. Feel free. And anything you think can be done better, we love <coughs> to hear opinions from techs. That's how D7.2 got to where it is today. That's how D7X is going to be any even better than anything else out there on the market is be based on feedback from techs and working with it. So we will be more than happy to help and uh, adjust and make things better for you how you want it to be. Whew. These two hour shows are really draining. Yeah. Yep. I got to go to the restroom. Okay. At least you didn't take us with you, like Nick did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we can unselect Proctor again, so it'll show all our faces here. Um, anything else we want to talk about while we wait a couple minutes, in case anybody wants to join the live chat there? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I am still buried in the code. Yeah. No, don't don't apologize for that. That's where we want you to be buried. Mm. Cool. Yes. Mm. Uh, Michael or Tank, do y'all have any tickets or things you might want to bring up or ask about or discuss here? Uh, no, not at the moment, I don't think. Well, yeah. It's like we just got a D7-2 purchase in. Awesome. Maybe they were watching the show. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Maybe. Eight <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah, just as soon as we finished up with Defunct, they were like, man, that is... So I am hopping on that. Good work. Excellent work, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, again, for anyone out there watching us on G Plus or on YouTube, feel free to jump over to foolishit.com slash live. Uh, you can join the live chat there and talk directly to us. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions, spend a little bit more time on it. Um, otherwise, we will be starting to get back to work here again. Uh, on our own sides. Um, also, for anyone watching on YouTube after the show, uh, you can always feel free to contact us at support at foolishit.com, foolishtech at foolishit.com, sales at foolishit.com, and ask us any questions there. We'll be more than happy to 
help from there on. So I hope this has been a good video for anyone watching, and thanks for watching. And our schedule now is Monday at 8 a.m., Tuesday at 10 a.m., Wednesdays at 2 p.m., Thursdays at 4 p.m., and Fridays at 6 p.m. So you can join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, to go over any things there, or Friday at 6 p.m. if you want to wait till after work. All of those times are Eastern Standard Time, so trying to give some people some various times that they can join in, whatever fits their workflow the best. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's been about our five minutes. We were going to hang around and wait. Um, again, you just heard all those things mentioned, so if you're watching on YouTube, rewind a little bit, listen to it again. Um, Otherwise, thank everyone for watching, and we will be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. for Thursday, and we'll have some more stuff we'll go over and go from there. And we're out.